Hello, my name is Jim Keller. I'm a professor of pharmacy, medicine, and oncology out of the University of Texas at Austin and the Health Science Center in San Antonio. Today we're going to be talking about the emetogenic potential of chemotherapy agents. Again, let's talk about the classification of chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting to start with. Acute nausea and vomiting is that nausea and vomiting that occurs within the first 24 hours after chemotherapy has been administered. Delayed nausea and vomiting would start the, the second day, days two through five plus, would be considered delayed nausea and vomiting, anything after that first 24-hour period. Breakthrough nausea and vomiting is that that occurs despite giving prophylactic antiemetics. So a patient's treated, they get the prophylactic antiemetics, and sometime right after that they, they break through and have nausea and vomiting. Anticipatory nausea and vomiting is a little bit different. This occurs after patients are treated and their conditioned response based off of their environment. So sight, sound, and smells can make a patient experience nausea and vomiting when they just are exposed to those sights, sounds, and smells that were part of the environment that, were, that made them throw up to begin with. So a lot of times patients can just come back into a clinic, they see a nurse, they have a, a, a specific smell in that clinic or a specific taste, and just that alone can make a patient throw up or have nausea and vomiting. That's called anticipatory. And then we have refractory where patients return in subsequent cycles, and even with prophylactic therapy, they continue to vomit. So let's look at the antimetic prophylaxis and look at the potential for chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting and the emetogenic potential of chemotherapy. There are two primary categories that we want to talk about. One is moderate emetogenic risk. These are ranged in the, the percent ability produced emesis between 30 and 90 percent frequency for patients who receive these agents. The whole list is here. I'm not going to go through them, but uh, some of the primary characters in here are oxaloplatin, which would be on the lower end, and carboplatin, which would be the, on the higher end of that 30 to 90 span. On the right side of the screen, you can see the highly emetogenic risk. These are certainly for agents that produce nausea and vomiting in over 90 percent of the times that they're administered. The key ones here, the prototype has always been cisplatin. Cisplatin is known as a highly emetogenic agent. The other group is uh, the AC regimens given in breast cancer treatment, anthracyclines and cyclophosphamide. Those have been more recently up upgraded to be now known as a highly emetogenic regimen versus historically or was a modern emetogenic regimen. So let's talk just shortly about cisplatin. Cisplatinum for the longest time has been the prototypical highly emetogenic agent. It's a cornerstone for all antiemetic therapies that get tested for their effects in highly emetogenic chemotherapy. It always is those studies are done in patients receiving cisplatinum. The cause of emesis here is almost 100%. The results is much easier to figure out because almost 100% of patients will have emesis due to receiving cisplatinum. The process of emesis, the timeline for emesis is well characterized with platinum, so the efficacy can be shown relatively easily for patients who do not vomit after they receive cisplatinum. This next curve shows you the time frame and the differences of the emetogenic potential of chemotherapy and when they start and when they stop. You can see from the curve here, platinum is biphasic, Again, a lot of uh, acute potential, that 99% occurs within that first 24 hours, but then there's a big delayed phase, and the delayed phase can reach up to peaks at days three to four, and then can stretch out into five, six, seven, eight, nine days. If you look at the dotted curve, that's cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide usually comes on a little slower, peaks at hours 12 to 24, and then tails off shortly after that. So again, you can see on the bottom, the acute emesis is, is a, due to the stimulation of serotonin, and the delayed phase is related more to the activation of substance P. So the summary of this section, the chemotherapy emetic potential is the primary determinant for nausea and vomiting. 
Chemotherapy can induce both acute within that first 24-hour period and delayed any time after the first 24-hour periods, generally between days 2 and 5 to 7 plus. Cisplatin has been the historic standard for a highly metagenic agent, cause emesis in well over 90% of the patients who take it, and has a risk of both acute and delayed, significant delayed nausea and vomiting. More recently, the breast cancer regimen of AC in women has been designated as highly metagenic. Higher doses of carboplatin were just recently designated as highly metagenic, and lower doses are now still considered moderate and metagenic. Uh, lower doses of carboplatin and oxaloplatin, as I said, are two of the primary agents that are considered now in the moderate category. I want to thank you again for uh, taking the time to listen. Thank you.